Good evening and welcome to the 36th annual Late Night in the Fog. hy V is the presenting sponsor of Late Night in the Fog. hy V is a proud sponsor of KU Athletics. Need dinner? Visit hy vcom slash mealtime. We hope you enjoy the show. I think Kansas has as good of an opportunity to win a national championship this year as they've had in the last ten. This is going to be a team so tough to deal with. Come on, Josh. They get better and better. Kansas certainly will be one of the favorites to win the national championship. And this program is elite of the elite. This is a team that we know can get to the Final Four and win it all. Conference title number 62 and 500 KU wins for Bill Simmons. Maybe the second coolest place on earth, an empty Allen Fieldhouse. Behind the coolest place on earth, obviously, Allen Fieldhouse with 16,300 patrons in it. But not this year, at least so far. Times are different, and certainly it's different with the basketball programs here at the University of Kansas. But that's not gonna stop us from having late night. And I wanna welcome everyone to our first ever virtual late night. And before we get started, and hopefully you'll be entertained, I want to look back about six or eight months and talk about Isaiah Moss, Devon Dotson, and Doe Kazabuki for leading us to a Big 12 championship, to the number one ranking in America, and to a team that was equipped, I believe, to make a run. And I think most of our fans would agree with that. We didn't get that opportunity, and we're going to miss those three guys tremendously, and especially Dot and Doke for the contributions they made over their career but we have everybody else back. Plus we have four stud newcomers that you guys are gonna love watching and supporting. We have unfinished business. Enjoy the show. Thanks Coach Self. Usually when I walk into the fog, my ears are ringing, but right now my voice is echoing and that's understandable because things are a little different. Welcome to Late Night, I am Kenitra Pulliam. This year, things are different, we understand that. But that doesn't mean you will miss out on any of the fun and tradition you've come to expect with Late Night. You'll have the skits, you'll have the scrimmages from both the men's and women's teams, and you'll also get to see some of the lighter side of the men's and women's basketball programs. We start things off with a look back at last year's women's basketball season that was cut short. It counts now after a couple of exhibition games, the regular season getting underway tonight. Opening tap will go to Kansas. Kerskeeter swats away the shot, two on one in for the right, scores, and she's fouled. And right split two defenders, wide open is Kerskeeter, out high, three-pointer is good. And why not? Look at that confident face of the young freshman. Bailey Helgren, right baseline, out to Franklin, who's open, left to the key, a three-pointer is good. They call her K Buckets. Thomas at the buzzer, a long three, that's good. That's what Anaya Thomas can do. Here comes Mitchell, left side, lay it up and in. Folks, this girl is dominating. Mitchell fires it inside to Helgren, who turns left and lays it in. Kansas is gonna win this tournament, and they do so in dominating and impressive fashion. Yes, it up left wing, Mitchell driving in, dishes Helgren, wide open, right baseline, lay it in. Here's Chisholm, low right, turn around, off the glass and in. Thomas to Kerskeeter, pull it to Helgren, skip it, baseline left, Stevens. And the Kansas Jayhawks will start 11-0. Happy New Year. Kansas, the 11-0 start their best in 14 seasons. The lone remaining undefeated team in the league. Kerskeeter, nice screen and roll with Stevens who lays it up and in. And Kerskeeter sidestep, right fires a three and hits. KU has their first Conference win of the year. Down the left, left-hander swatted down by Merriweather. Up to Thomas, angles right. Shovels it up. Wow. Ball score is good for Anaya Thomas. That's it. Kansas stuns Texas. The Jayhawks upset the Longhorns. Kansas comes to the road and gets sweet revenge on Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. 
Henry Tees is a proud sponsor of the Jayhawk women's basketball team for more than 20 years. Henry Tees great daily specials are available for contactless carryout and curbside delivery. Go to HenryTees.com to order your next daily deal. Welcome back to our first virtual late night in the fog. We now bring you the women's basketball skit, a take on the basketball version of Freaky Friday, where the coaches and the players swap roles. Brought to you by Merit Trust Credit Union. Let's be focused, let's bring a lot of energy, and let's have a great practice. Family on three, one, two, three. Family. Right hand, pass it right hand. Here we go, pay attention, bounce, bounce, cross. Well, you're supposed to work on your pass. I don't know what Brock's doing out there, but. Of shape. <laughs> All right, good work, y'all. Now we're going to get into lab labs. Brandon, start it off. shooter out of the coaches it's between Terry and Kojaz I would say <laughs> definitely not Brandon oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody up family on three one two three family. that was certainly interesting the coaches now know what it's like when the players hold the power 
The KU women's basketball team are certainly flexing their civic muscles, spearheading a change that they see taking place in society. Leading a voter registration drive for all of the Kansas athletics started here and spread throughout the community. We had a conversation in the locker room on Thursday before practice and we were talking about the social injustices that have been happening lately uh, with Jacob Blake and we felt like we were the team that could take a stand and lead this movement and once we started talking about taking action then we figured we could go on a march. We all made the executive decision together that we need to go and we need to be the ones to start the change and then just look at how many people are here today. We want to unify the people with a voice in Lawrence and let everyone know that their voice will be heard today. Oh, our, our young women deserve all the credit. Um, you know, this was this was their idea, and I just couldn't be more proud of um, their voice uh, and their ability to to put together such a successful, peaceful march. We all have the same mindset. We all support each other. We all love each other, and it's just it's just amazing to be on a in a program that cares so much about you as a person, your skin color, everything. In the past few weeks since our Black Lives Matter March that we held as a team, the women's basketball program here at KU has been thinking what's next. Obviously we can't hold a march every day and we understand that everyone has responsibilities outside of social justice, but we can't change our identities and we are affected by this and when we need to take action, we thought of some other things such as the voter registration drive that we've had so we're really encouraging and pushing people to vote. Yeah, we recently were on call with TCU and they had this dope idea to connect all the women's basketball teams in the conference and help to get everyone registered to vote. We've been able to get 100% registered as well as get everyone on our team that's from out of state apply for an absentee ballot. We are also wearing the Black Lives Matter patches and our warm-up shirts just to keep the conversation going and really put action, put it into words, and put it in action for it to be visible for our spectators, our fans, and other people around. Maybe inspire other teams to do the same, which is be responsible for the change that you want to see here. On the other side of the break, we'll get to meet this year's KU women's basketball team. Welcome back. We hope you are enjoying our first virtual late night in the fog. Now it gets more exciting as we meet our 2020-2021 women's basketball team. For those of you who've never seen the greatest the world has ever revealed, I'd like to introduce myself. Let's go! I'm out here making the mag, I got it, got it. Too good at being 
Dream from Nashville, Tennessee, wearing number zero, Erica Haynes over to Freshman from school in Denmark, number 12, Katrina Ellison. And now, a 5'10 sophomore from Sand Springs, Oklahoma, Holly Martina! At guard, coming from Lakeland, Florida, a 5'7 sophomore, number 15, Zakaya K. 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 Bucket Franklin. At guard, a 5'9 senior from Le Pantigny, Quebec. Number 20, Julie Bourassa. Number 21, a 5'6 junior, live from New Orleans, Louisiana, Brooklyn Mitchell. At guard, a 5'11 redshirt sophomore from Kansas City, Missouri. Number 25, Chandler Prater. At center, a 6'5 junior from Plymouth, North Carolina. Number 31, Brittany Franklin. At center, 6'5 senior from Edina, Minnesota. Number 35, Bailey Helgren. Go home. A center, a 6'3 sophomore from Lawrence, Kansas. Number 45, Chisholm Ejeko. Crown Automotive is a proud sponsor of the Kansas Jayhawks. Stop by our Lawrence location today or visit crownautomotive.com. Crown Automotive, driving forward.
Welcome back. Next up, Coach Brandon and Jimmy Chavez take you through the women's basketball scrimmage. This is year six for Coach Brandon, and it starts as we get ready for the scrimmage as late night in the fog continues from Allen Fieldhouse as you see the team get ready to take the court on James Naismith Court. And uh, we'll introduce you to some of the players as you saw already just before the uh, intro from the players' families as we begin here. Now, with the ball is Chandler Prater, and we talk about the new kids that you've added. But to get her healthy, and you've known her, you said you told the story. This was the first kid you called when you got the job here, and to see her finally get out there on the basketball floor, I, I don't even think excited's an appropriate word. No, uh, you know Chandler's worked really hard to, to come back and, and rehab uh, and prepare herself for for the upcoming season. Um, you know she's going to be a, a player that our fans really enjoy. She's uh, a really hard worker, a high energy player. Um, who we feel have very really high expectations for moving forward. Well, this now is that's a probably the only five player I've ever coached uh, that we're going to let rebound the ball and take it up the floor in transition. Um, Jimmy, this is uh, Yoan is a player that um, we we are just really really excited about. Uh, we feel like we can run a lot of offense through her. Um, you know, we haven't had that. The type of point production, uh, you know, from our five spot, um, she'll she'll play both the four and the five, but uh, she's going to allow us to to really run a lot of offense, um, you know, through the post. Hotsi Leonetti, did I did I do well? Uh, you'd have to ask her. Okay. But that that you've pronounced it as well as anybody. <laughs> so um, something tells me everybody's going to get used to that very quickly because she's just that much of a stud. She's a good player and um, I think is, is going to do a lot of real positive things for our program and, and has a bright future. Speaking of bright future, how about Anaya Thomas? She's back and she was playing her best basketball of the season down the stretch and really was key in those wins you had late in the season and she was going to be a big focal point in March. Yeah, I, I'd have to look back at the stats, but I'm, I'm not so sure she didn't lead our team in scoring a year ago and uh, her along with... Uh, you know, Zakiya Franklin. So uh, to have that tandem back on the perimeter um, is, is something that uh, we're looking forward to. You look, and then Tina Stevens, who's a senior, and she came in right away at the beginning of the season and made her presence felt. I mean, in November in that tournament you played down in Boca, she went home to Florida and she performed uh, amazingly. Tina had a great first year as a junior college player. Um, we expect her to to come back and, and um, you know, really just build on that. And we talk about these kids, and it's not just what they do on the floor. I mean, every kid we've mentioned, they are amazing people off the floor, and it's really something that fans are proud of. Well, Jimmy, we just want to be the type of team that uh, that's easy to support. And, um, you know, my opinion, if, if you do the right things, you know, in the classroom and in the community, uh, and you come out and, and you pour your heart and soul into trying to win, um, you know, for, for your university and uh, your community and your state, then uh, people will come out and, and uh, you know, we want to get max, max capacity, whatever that's going to look like uh, this year. We're, we're looking forward to, to getting fans back in the stands. <laughs> Zakiya Franklin giving it to Chisholm Ojekwu. And uh, tell me about Zakiya. I mean, sophomore, you could never tell if she was down 25 or up 25. She just played the same way every play, about as steady of a, as a player. And you had to check. Yeah, just, Are you sure she's a freshman? Well, just really has the right type of demeanor um, that you want from a point guard. Um, but I think she's got some killer in her, too. You know, you don't want to mistake that for... Oh, there she is again. They're going to get to know her very quickly. And I remember specifically when you talked about Joanna as a year ago on one of your Hawk Talks, you were talking about once she signed, man, you lit up like it was Christmas morning because it's just a type of player that can really change so much of what you guys are able to do in this tough league. Well, uh... You know, you got to be careful that you don't oversell a young player. Um, but she is the youngest member um, of the, the Greek senior national team. Uh, so, so that 
that country and, and their basketball organization obviously think very highly of her. Um, you know, I think had she been a high school player in the state, that um, there's a good chance that she would have been a McDonald's All-American caliber high school player here, um, you know, in the U.S. I believe it. And not the only new player. You have some new players. One of them has entered the game just a little bit ago. Mia Vuksek from Croatia. And you talked a lot about her, too. You guys really like her. Well, can, is, is really an outstanding three-point shooter, can really stretch the defense. Uh, you know, Jimmy, we've been really small on the perimeter here for several years, and that's something that we wanted to address. So it's great to add a, a big guard um, who, who can provide some offensive firepower as well. With the ball and just giving it up was Julie Brousseau, and she's a graduate transfer, and she can light it up from pretty much anywhere on the floor. Tell me about her. Well, uh, she's going to be able to play two positions for us. We think that she can contribute at, at the shooting guard primarily, but could also play some at the point. Um, very, very mature, smart player. Um, was with Coach Jasmine at the University of Maine early in her career, so had a previous relationship with her. And um, we think she'll, she'll make an impact. She brings a lot of experience and just has a way of handling the ball. You see down in the post, Katrine Jensen, Jessen from Denmark and another player that you guys are very high on. And, very long, very not just the tall, but the length as well. Yeah, she's uh, she is long, very Jimmy, very high IQ, and I'm just amazed at how well she picks things up. Uh, I think you know her biggest impact early in her career, probably going to be on the defensive end. And there's Brousseau right there, and made that look easy against a pretty good. Play. We don't want to let this get away without talking about one of your uh, big returners from last year. Had a sensational freshman season in Holly Kersgeter. Their first game, 24 points, 10 rebounds. First week gets Big 12 Player of the Week. She thinks, oh, it's going to be easy the, like this the entire way. And she just continued to improve as the season went on. Well, I, I think uh, she's probably our most improved player uh, also here over the, over the summer months. That's um, saying something. You know, she's... It wouldn't surprise me if she leads our team in scoring. Um, just is, is really to become more and more aggressive. Uh, you know, we had to beg her to hunt her shot uh, last year and, and uh, I think understands that, you know, that's the kind of role that, that we really want her to play. And um, I think she's just more, getting more and more comfortable. You see Brooklyn Mitchell with the ball. Can't forget about her. She, from day one, just came in here and uh, kind of lit things up. And now a junior, so she's adding that experience with that quickness, uh, maybe the fastest on the team. Yeah, Brooks is obviously an elite athlete, uh, is a game changer. Uh, you know, averaged about eight and a half points for us last year coming off the bench. Um, I think she'll compete for, for uh, you know, starting minutes. Um, but I also think that, you know, with, with this team this year, uh, getting in a starting role is going to be as hard as, as it ever has been. And even if you're not in the starting lineup, there's just so much value that seven, eight, nine are going to add to the. Yeah, five I, I that are think there. The, the depth that we have, um, especially in a year where, you know, with, with COVID and not knowing, um, you know, night in and night out if you're going to have everybody available. Uh, so I think depth is going to be definitely be key. See Bailey Helgren down in the middle there, her senior year, and you've seen her grow not just as a basketball player, but as a person as well. Yeah, just uh, an anchor for us. Um, really the, the protector of our culture, and um, just can't say enough about what she's meant to our program. Great family too. Her mom will make the trip from Minnesota often to come to games no matter how bad the weather. Of course, it's not gonna face someone from Minnesota, but. Uh, she's someone that has meant a lot to this program as we've talked about culture since day one and you're seeing it all kind of come together with this group of kids. So much athleticism and it's something that you're excited to take into this Big 12 conference because everybody gets better, but you know what, you guys got better too. Well, we, we think we did. Um, we're fortunate that we are going to be able to play a few, you know, non-conference games uh, prior to Big 12 play, but, um, you know, practices are, are going to be really, really important because you know, we're without exhibition games or scrimmages. So, you know, we have to uh, have to make the most of every day. Yeah, the schedule will have a few non-conference games and then a big 12 conference play is gonna start a little bit earlier, just the way it's going and the way they're trying to piece it together. But 
uh, looks to be as close to his full season as you guys could have hoped for, and that's great because you guys can't wait to see him actually in game action, and obviously uh, the fans as well. Yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, we you know yet to see the the schedule, but um, our goal is that we get to play 18 games, Jimmy. Yeah, Brandon, a lot of great players that you've put together here, and. Uh, Best of luck to you. Obviously, hopefully, health will be with you guys as well, and can't wait for the season. Thanks, Jimmy. For Coach Brandon Schneider, it's Jimmy Chavez. Stay tuned for more Late Night of the Fog from Allen Fieldhouse next. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas is a proud sponsor of tonight's virtual Late Night in the Fog. Visit them online at bcbsks.com. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas. Commitment, compassion, community. Jayhawk fans, thank you for joining us for our virtual late night. We greatly appreciate you supporting our women's basketball program. Uh, we're excited to safely get this season started off uh, and hope to show you everything we think our team can become. <laughs> Election night is fast approaching, so please get out and vote. We hope you, you enjoy the rest of your evening and... So. Uh, 12 years here at Kansas so far um, we uh, we learn certain things about about our coaches and pick up on certain certain traits of theirs today we're gonna give you a little look at what it's like to be a Kansas athlete all right man you better jump on that jump shot you ain't gonna get that off in the game all right you think I'm just talking I ain't just talking better action you can't score against them guys in the game tie you on jump you missed three in a row and you wonder why you can't make a shot. <laughs> Tian, get flat. Tie on, get flat. Get dressed to the baseline. Get some edge. On the edge in the corner. You guys better bring the energy today because coach is on one. All right? You got to bring the energy. If not, we're on the line. I'm not messing with you. I'm not messing with you. He's on one today. You, I don't hear you. You're not speaking. All right. All right. Hey, right. Joel wouldn't have made that move. You got to make a stronger move. Jump hook. Saw. So, we don't finger roll. Come on. Come on. <laughs> okay. 
Who wanna be great? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know you wanna be great. Mm -hmm. Check me out, check me out. Mm -hmm. Bring it, bring it. Tuesday, we about to work. Yes sir, we got some new moves, guys. Let me show you, uh, right, right here. Like some bicep. <laughs> we gonna settle today. We gonna settle today. Okay, so look, the first thing I got in our worksheet group, we got rear, early foot, elevated, explosive squat, lunge, split jump. We gonna come here, come here. step back, come here. Throw the foot up. There you go. Come back. You got it? Yeah, okay. You got to be great. You got to be great today. Are y'all slacking off? Don't be complacent. Don't be complacent. You got to be great. Smooth. Let's get it smooth. Go. Did you turn, you turn your parking? I did. Parking, got it. <laughs> I just talked to your mother the other day. She was oh, great. <laughs> you your, uh, school, I talked to Vince. He said, you got it. You got it, fam. Oh, good, good, good. How you going, bud? Thank you. Good, good. Tyon, <laughs> come here, man. I'm looking good. Good hits. Last boot camp. You just got it. Tristan, did you? I talked to your, he was, uh, you got it? Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, man? How you doing, man? Jet. How you doing? Oh, oh. How you, you turning that? They told me you didn't turn in. It might. Uh, I'll talk to Beth. You got it. Okay. <laughs> How you doing, stud? Feel self, Kansas. I just wanted to let you know. You came out here today. You couldn't guard anything. You couldn't score the pencil. You got guys over there, real guys, that are going out there. They're taking your food and eating it off your plate. Now I'm just saying, you can't do anything. I don't understand. You're on pace for 12 points in all of practice. We haven't had that happen before ever. Back in three years ago at Tulsa. We had guys, real ones, not you, comical. I don't get it. You gotta turn it up. Get on the line. Hey bud, hey, hey bud, how you doing? They told me you didn't turn it in, but I know you. I trust you. <laughs> Usually when we see the players, they have their serious game faces on. So it was nice to see the lighter side of basketball. Now during this offseason, the men's basketball program put an emphasis on using the platform to educate themselves and others about social issues they face. These last six months have all showed us there's stuff more important than sports going on out there. And, and uh, certainly that's become very apparent with the pandemic and everybody and how they dealt with their COVID situations respectively, because it has certainly impacted everybody uh, in the United States without question. And also the, 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 the social uh, injustice things that have taken place since then. Uh, I guess it started a long, long, long time ago, but it became most apparent with George Floyd's death uh, uh, this spring. And then the way that uh, America has kind of rallied around the different tragedies and incidents that have occurred post that, that has really brought uh, really attention to this in a much needed way. But we knew that the student athlete that left us in March was not the same student athlete that's gonna to return to campus in August. So we had to strategize and even organize some of the things that we can do to help and better serve our student athletes from an emotional standpoint, from an engagement standpoint, from an educational standpoint. So we came up with some initiatives that we felt that with the connection of our basketball program, coaches, staff, things that we can come together, have a better understanding. You, you don't mind if I get in your, we got a couple minutes, just let me, just let me look through your car real quick. Good answer, I'd rather not. I'm not saying we've done enough as a staff, but we've done quite a bit. and, and uh, whether it be having a doctor of the Oklahoma City Thunder educate us on just how to start conversations. I thought that was really important to kind of kickstart this whole thing and then to have Maria Taylor on Zoom call with our players and educating us uh, uh, how it worked inside the NBA bubble, the thoughts and everything about this. And it's been really interesting throughout this journey to hear how different people and different players are using their voices and are using their platforms and there's no wrong or right way to do it. Having someone come talk to our guys about how to become more fiscally responsible and understand credit and a lot of different things that, that was also very good for me to actually understand. Having Dexter Armstrong, a, a ranger, come over here and, and educate us and, and do a, basically a, a seminar on uh, Brown versus Board 
of Topeka. I thought that was terrific to see how laws were changed and passed and stuff like that. Uh, got the campus police that come in and did an unbelievable sit down with our guys so our guys could ask some questions and, and the police could also in turn educate our guys on what they're feeling on a routine traffic stop or whatnot too. I thought that, I thought that was terrific. Uh, um, you know, watching the documentary 13th, which I believe everybody should watch. Very educational. Uh, reading Dr. King's letter from the Birmingham prison, uh, I thought was fantastic. And these are all things that we talk to our players about, and then we've had open dialogue with them and tell us what this means to you. The best educator for everyone is empathy. When you can teach empathy and understanding of another person's background and experience, and um, the way they may have been brought up. And when that sinks in and digests, it's when you can learn from there and build and grow and go forward. One thing I really, I really like about our players is they know I want them to have a voice. And they also understand I am the leader of this program. And I also understand this is one time I need to lead standing side by side with them or maybe even lead from behind because this is a time for them to stand up and have their voice heard. I'm more proud than I've ever been over the past uh, two years that I've been here. Um, I think Coach Self and the staff have done a, a great job of you know, taking initiative, but also our guys um, off the court have, you know, we put an extra effort into uh, changing and doing what's right and what we believe in. Um, as opposed to just sitting behind and watching from behind the scenes. Hey, going into this season, we're concerned about, obviously, preparation. We're concerned about winning games. We're concerned about uh, academically and, and doing well this fall semester. But don't think for a minute that it's going to be forgotten of another purpose we have, and that is take the things that we've learned and use our voice and our platform to impact our community in a very positive way. I know change is not going to, you know, happen overnight. Um, we've seen as history progresses that, you know, change takes time. Um, and I feel like we're at a point where this is something that we can change even more uh, for our future generations and give them the positivity and love that they need um, growing forward and, you know, moving along with our, with our world. Being an advocate for change is stepping up in the hard times and having those hard talks. Being an advocate for change is promoting voting. Being an advocate for change is holding your friends and family accountable. Well, whatever those things are, this is being an advocate for change. These are the right decisions to go forward.
KU, Keith Morris here, your latest Jayhawk NBA champion. And I'm here today to present to you guys Jayhawks in the NBA. Rock Chalk, Jayhawk. One of the highlights of late night has always been the half court shot. Over the last few years, Coach Self has offered up $10,000 to the winner. Now things are a little different this year, so we have Coach Self to explain the rules. Every late night, we've had an opportunity to kind of do a half court shots to benefit one of our students. So if my staff right now, my staff of Brent Richard, Jeremy Case, Curtis Townsend, Norm Roberts, and Jaron Howard, we're missing one, Fred Quarterbaum, because he just tore his uh, uh, Achilles, making an unbelievably quick move one day in practice running after a basketball. So we only have five coaches. But if my staff could make one for three grand, hit a rim for two grand, hit a back for, for one grand, if we can add up to five grand, we're going to donate five grand to Just for Food and then whatever we make for Just for Food, we're going to donate the same thing to one lucky fan out there that supports the Jayhawks. All right, Norm Roberts will go first. See what he's got. Hey, right there, we got two grand already earned by Just for Food. Pretty good there, Coach Rob. Now we got Jaron Howard, who was a great player back in the early 2000s at the University of Illinois. That right there was one reason why he probably didn't play as much as he wanted to back in the early 2000s at the University of Illinois. Coach Townsend, he played collegially back in the 1950s. Look at Coach T. Oh, another one that's short. We're stuck on two grand, folks. Brennan Bouchard is probably the best half-court shooter that our program has ever seen. Brennan Bouchard, he's got a chance, folks. You know what? That right there earned only one grand. You just, even though you hit the backboard twice, you still only get one grand. So we're up to 3,000. Now, if Jeremy Case can hit real, if he can hit real, that's the five grand to a lucky fan and adjust for food. Jeremy's a great shooter. He does it. With all those zero makes, we got 
two that go away winners, just for food and a lucky fan. Hey, Aaron Gerhardt is on the other line here, and he thinks he's got to answer some trivia questions correctly in order to win the five thousand uh, uh, dollars that we matched with just for food. So uh, he doesn't. He's already won it. Let's just see how he handles it. Are you, are you a KU hoops fan at all? Yes, sir. Okay, so l l let's just let's just let's just throw you a softball. Okay. Who's the all-time leading scorer at KU? Um, that would be. Is that is that Perry Ellis? Well, uh, if if I if I had a, a red button here, I'd go. Uh, oh, Dan, Danny's all. I thought you said you were a a, a a fan and studied KU basketball. I was I was looking I was looking up uh, a little bit yesterday. Uh, okay. That's, that's well, what I said. I, I'll I tell know. you what I'll do. I'll send your answer though to Perry and his and his family, so they'll 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 be happy to hear that. So, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Who is the who is the single season? All-time leading scorer at KU. Single season. Is that Wilt? That's Wilt. Okay. That's good. One for two. All right, the last one. Name four players off the 2008 National Championship team. Uh, uh, Who made Mario, the shot? Mario, Mario Chalmers. Um, and that would be uh, – Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you a little bit. You got the main guy. Yeah, right. right. So that, that's a bonus. But you know, Brandon Rush, Darnell Jackson, Sasha Khan, Sharon Collins, Darrell Arthur, Sasha Cole Khan, Aldridge. Right. Uh, 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 so so uh, Russell Robinson. So I mean, we we had a pretty good group that year. So so, mm -hmm. but you know what? A lot of KU fans may think that you didn't. You're not very good at trivia. Right. You know I what? Agree. I would agree. And, and and but you're a finalist. And fortunately for you. We only have one finalist. You just won 5K by being able to answer one question accurately. What? <laughs> I thought there. I thought there were more finalists. Well, we well, there's not. We just picked one. Do you not want the money? Because we could certainly pick, no, pick I'll, somebody. No, I'll, I'll I'll take it. it. I'll take it. Well, here's no. what I want you to do. Do one thing for me. You're going to get a check from from me, but I'm looking at the background of your room. Buy at least a little bit of decor. Okay. I will, I will, I will, sir. This year's different, but we still got an opportunity to give away $5,000 to Just for Food and, and obviously $5,000 to maybe the next winner on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire.
for a virtual late night in the fog. And now's the time we get to introduce you to our 2020-2021 men's basketball team. Here's a guy that played and coached at North Carolina. And here's a guy that coached and went to the national championship and game at UCLA. And he used to tell me, those places are great, but there's no place like Kansas. Everyone knows Kansas has a great basketball heritage, and it will be our constant effort to enrich and enhance this tradition. It makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. I mean, it is a spine-tingling experience here just before. It's as good as it gets. I look at Allen Fieldhouse as the St. Andrews College basketball with the history of this building and this university. Crown Automotive is a proud sponsor of the Kansas Jayhawks. Stop by our Lawrence location today or visit crownautomotive.com. Crown Automotive, driving forward. At guard, a 5'11 freshman from Chicago, Illinois, wearing number four, Latrell Jocelyn! Hey, I'm going to eat a lot of muscade. I'm going to go to Haiti. I'm going to go Dans la première année université, 2m8, numéro 35. Standing at 6 foot 5, hailing from Tulsa, Oklahoma, home of Black Wall Street. It's my peanut butter, your guard, number 24, Bryce Thompson. At the bar at 6 1, freshman from Columbia, Missouri, wearing number 3, Dewan Harris. Forward, 6'8", redshirt freshman from Denton, Texas. Number 10, my baby, Jalen Wilson. At guard, 6'7", sophomore, out of Burlington, Kansas, wearing number two, Christian Brown. At the guard, a 6'8 sophomore from Almere, the Netherlands, wearing number 13, Tristan Einaruna. At guard, 6'5 from Dallas, Texas, wearing number 20, Michael Jankovic. Please put your hands together for my son, Ed Guard, 6'7 junior out of Kansas City, Kansas, Tyon Grant Foster. A 6'10 junior forward all the way from Norfolk, Virginia, wearing number 33, David McCormick. Woo! Ed Guard, a 6'5 junior from Kansas City, Missouri, wearing number 30, Oh, At guard, a 6'5 senior from Leewood, Kansas, and my favorite player, Christopher Tehan. At forward, a 6'8 redshirt senior from Gilbert, Arizona, wearing number 44, Mitch Lightfoot. Guard, a 6'5 senior from Dallas, Texas, wearing number zero, Marcus Garrett. Come on! Keep it 
out and swipe it like it. Look, I made it. Hashtag, yep, I'm the greatest. And the game don't stop till I get on top. Are you ready now? Welcome back. I'm Kenitra Pulliams. We now take you to the men's basketball scrimmage with Coach Self and Greg Gurley. There's no contest when it comes to fresh beef versus frozen. That's why Wendy's makes every hamburger with 100% fresh, never frozen beef, and it always will. Wendy's is now available on all delivery platforms for your late night meals. Choosing Wendy's is a slam dunk. Welcome to Allen Fieldhouse in the very first 2020 Late Night in the Fog done virtually. Yeah, so I think this is like the 36th year. I think so. And 35 out of 36 years was pretty normal. And this is not a normal year, this so we're going to go at year. it. We're going to have two nine-minute halves. No, 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 no. We're just going to play one 10-minute quarter. Oh, one 10-minute quarter. Yeah, just one, quarter. one 10-minute quarter, and we're going to stop the clock, and We'll see what the guys got right now. I, I don't think it'll be ultra impressive, to be honest with you. But who knows? Let's who check knows? it out. Let's check it out. So we got uh, on the red team here, we got David, Ochai, Dewan, Tristan, and Bryce. And on blue, we got Marcus at the point, Tyon, Christian, Jalen, and kind of a new and improved oh, Jalen. Oh. Talk about Jalen a little bit. Yeah, Jalen's improved a lot. There's Mitch trying to make a move on the post. He short-armed it. I don't think our fans got to see much of Jalen last year because of the injury. I but think he played about a total of a minute and 30 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, the entire year. He he uh, he played a minute against Duke and, and shot a bad shot and walked. 
and he came out, and then he played eight seconds in the next game before he broke his foot. So, got a haircut during COVID, shed some weight. He did Looks definitely good. shed some weight. There's a guy right there that a lot of our fans don't know much about, Dewan Harris. Talk a little bit about Dewan. He was uh, uh, became eligible to practice second semester last year. And those of us within the program know how good he is, but I don't know if our fan base know much about Dewan. He, De Dewan, there's Tristan knocking down. Good pass from Moach. Of course, if you can play five against four, four you're probably going to get a good shot. But but uh, uh, Dewan, Dewan is a uh, uh, has great vision. Probably about as good a feel as any true point guard we've had. Of course, we have made a living off of combo guards, but he he's a true kind of going back to an Aaron Miles type point guard. Staying with the point guard position, uh, your senior point guard, Marcus Garrett, you foresee, I mean, he's kind of a Swiss Army knife, but you foresee him kind of starting at the point? Uh, I do. I, I, I matter of fact, I, I, I definitely do. There's Tyon taking a bad shot, got fouled, I think. But I, I think Marcus will have a great year. Good pass and got fouled. Bad shots usually lead to fast break points. We've been doing this a while, and uh, we see a lot of bad shots during late night. And uh, what do you what do you want to take away from this? Well, nothing. nothing. Uh, 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 no, we'll forget about this as soon as it's over. But the thing that thing that's a little bit different is, you know, this is being recorded long before you actually watch it. So hopefully, by the time you're watching it, right. uh, uh, we will actually be a little bit better. This is this is uh, our first official practice. So uh, even though we should know a little bit about what we're doing. That's good execution right there. You got an easy basket. But over the last few weeks, you've been able to have some, even though yeah. this is the first official, kind of talk about what you've been able to do over the last couple months. Well, we've been able to practice depending on, there's a good play by Bryce. Good, and Tristan's two for two. Good play. If Tristan can do that, wow, we, we, we got ourselves a player. But, but you know, it used to be you could, you could get four hours a week with your team. And this year, they because of COVID, they changed some things. CB with the long shot just comes up short. We changed some things and we get we've gotten eight hours a week here the last three weeks, along with four hours in the weight room. So we've actually done more stuff than what uh, most most people probably would think. You know, uh, uh, considering this is our first official practice. There's David spinning around. You know, talk about David. Um, you know, you obviously lose the the best offensive player we've had in a long time, and Doak and such a presence. Uh, David's got some big shoes to fill. Well, David, I think from a production standpoint, will be just as good, will be just as productive. He, I don't know that he'll get as many rebounds, and, and hopefully that's because we have more guys that can rebound this year. But 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 from a scoring standpoint, I'm confident David will score points. He just won't get them off lobs. There's Bryce with the long shot, misses it. I think David can do that right there with the best of them. I, I, yeah. That's a, that's something that we haven't had, you know, with Doak, although Doak gives us a chance to make plays above the rim like very few that I've ever coached. We saw a miss by Bryce Thompson, a kid that you've known pretty much his whole life after, you know, coaching his dad at, at Tulsa. Talk about uh, Bryce Thompson. Well, you know, uh, Coach Robertson, myself, uh, uh, Coach Rod, and, 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 and Goldie was on the volleyball team, his mother, at TU, so we've known him for a long time. And, Rod was a terrific player. I don't like good back cut. I don't like telling him that very often, but he was a good player. I think he averaged about 15 or 16 for us uh, uh, there at Tulsa. And, and then, but Bryce has a chance to be a really, really good, good player. He's, uh, he's very smart. He's got a good frame. He's going to grow into it. And, you know, he's got to tighten up a few things. He needs to become better off the catch, but he's, he's, his mid-range game is terrific. For, pretty advanced for a freshman. There's Tristan Anaruna, if I'm not mistaken. He's got 11 points. I think that, or they scored 10, so he's got all 10 points, if I'm not mistaken. You know, Tristan's a guy that went back home uh, during COVID and he had some difficulties getting him back, but uh, talk about his progression and just his body and just everything about Tristan and how he can help you this year. Well, I, th I thought last year he, he had an okay year, but he had a lot to learn. Uh, I think he knows more what it takes to be a player and uh, you know, Greg, you, you, you've been through it too. Now, but there's some that are that are that are the exception and not the rule. But 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 most uh, most uh, young kids, it takes a little while to get used to college basketball, and it took him a little time. And and uh, but I actually believe that he's going to be a really good player and have a great year for us. And you like tough kids. You just need Tristan to be a little bit more assertive, more of a alpha. Yeah, more of an alpha. You know, more of a an assassin type. Uh, uh, he's. 
His game is very smooth, which is great. But sometimes smooth can relate to casual, and, and we don't need we need to be smooth but not casual. I know this will be aired here in a couple weeks, but yesterday or maybe it was this morning about the the possible sixth year of eligibility for your fifth year senior Mitch Lightfoot. Talk about that rule change that the NCAA just came out with. Well, I, I think it's a good rule change. Uh, uh, I think that uh, it could be really good for us if all our guys come back. You know, it could also there's David shooting the three. Look pretty good. Just you sure. good with you good with David shooting threes? I think she won a game, probably. You know, something like that. But I don't see him shooting a lot more. There's Ty on with a good move. But see, even right there, as, as you watch, Ty on. That's uh, instead of going through contact, he tried to go around it, and, right. and he's not going to shoot a lot of free throws if he does that. But he's got a lot of talent. He can get to the hole. But he's got, he's got to be able to play through contact a little better. Speaking of Ty on, you know, he's a Kansas City kid that. Nobody really knew much about ends up going to, to Indian Hills up in Iowa and then just burst onto the scene. I remember talking with you last year about how good you thought Tyon was and it, and it you know it's early on. But what do you think of him since he's been on campus? Uh, I think his talent level is terrific. Good rebound by Mark. I think his talent level is terrific. I think I think the speed of the game is still a little fast. Uh, he's plenty athletic to play through it, but but I think I think he kind of plays in spurts, and he's got to be able to you know tune in defensively all the time. But he's 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 got a lot of talent. I I, I hope he can. Oh, David! I just hope he can be a, a, a good player for us early, and not necessarily have to wait till conference play like most JUCOs uh, uh, or high school kids. They probably aren't going to be what they can be until probably second semester. This summer, as our student athletes and our staff took time to hold conversations and dialogue about social injustices, it became apparent that we as coaches had the opportunity to affect change and help diversity in our industry. As the head coach at Kansas, what better way to create change by doing so under the umbrella of the John McClendon Foundation? I, along with college coaches across America, decided to do our part by committing resources and support for the McClendon Foundation Future Leader Program. The program's purpose is to provide minorities a jump start to their careers through practical experiences, opportunities to build their network, and instilling the values of John McClendon, integrity, education, leadership, and mentorship.
hy V is a proud sponsor of KU Athletics. Save time, shop online, hy V IslesOnline.com. Another guy we haven't talked about is Christian Brown, local kid out of Blue Valley Northwest. And, uh, you know, I think you knew how good he was, but I think yeah. a lot of the I, I thought he exceeded I, all expectations you know, you know last year. You know, usually if you go to a Big 12 school or Kansas, you know, you probably are a starter on their AAU tour most of the time. As a freshman. And, and, yeah. and, and, and here he is. He starts for us probably easier than he started for his his own AAU program. And, and, and he didn't have a good year last year. As you know, he had a great year. He shot it great. He's tough. He has no fear. I, 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 I think that uh, – I think he's got a chance to be ter terrific. E even though it was a loss, yeah, I was. Even though it was a loss when we were in Philadelphia to Villanova, but I think that's when he really started to, to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, he was good. He, he, he was good that had game. that. He had that and one, then blocked a, a dunk attempt, kept us in the game. But uh, you know, you've got between point guard to four man, you got about eight guys that are going to get minutes. See that? See that? And you got a lot of size. That's a bad play there by Jethro. Good pass. Tyon, good play, and Jalen knocks it down. Yeah, really good. Tyon could have forced something there, but, but made but, the extra pass. But to your point, Christian, Christian, and Jalen are huge keys uh, because that those, those three freshmen need to show some great improvement, and I think they have, and I think they will. Jethro's a little bit behind. I mean, that should be a basket right there. He's got to be able to catch and finish that. But. But, you know, if, if Tyon and Bryce give us what we think they can and you got Marcus and Oach and, uh, 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 you know, that are a little bit more. You know, You're going to have a lot of we options. Got, we, we got some options. When perimeter. you look down that bench when somebody's not getting it done, I would imagine that makes practice that much more competitive because if you can't do it, there's going to be somebody on the bench that's going to get well, a shot. We hope so. We hope so, yes. So. You know, you mentioned him, but Je Jethro, you know, a guy that uh, has got the athleticism and like speed of the game might be a, a little much for him now. But uh, what do you what do you see his role on the team this year? I don't know. I, I good play by Bryce. Tristan gets. A, I, I really don't know. I think a lot depends on foul situations or if we stay healthy. You know, M M Mitch and Mitch and David should be the should be the you know main big guys so to speak. And so you know, I, I'm hoping he can give us some good minutes. There's really no reason to redshirt anybody this year since everybody's going to get their year back right. anyway. So we'll wait and see. We talked earlier uh, or late in the summer when you told me Marcus has really improved his jump shot. Do you, it, can you really tell that he's improved it or not? I mean, that's kind of the one bugaboo with this game. He's a great defender, great passer, savvy on the court, and his jump shot is the one thing that is there's room for improvement. Well, I, I think there's still room for improvement, but I, I like how he's shooting the ball. Uh, and, and in our shooting drills that we do, it's good play. That's, that's Dewan right there. It's terrible defense. Dewan can just extend yeah, plays. Yeah, and he's, he's not not, he, not a he, great shooter, you know, but he's. You know how uh, Steve Nash used to just dribble around and dribble around until he threw it to somebody for a layup? Yep. That's kind of, right Dewan's there. got a little bit of that in him. See if, if you got your entire baseline out of bounds uh, package in yet? Uh, we haven't got one thing in yet. <laughs> that's very evident by that. <laughs> Good move by David, just doesn't finish. Yeah, Tyon really likes uh, to attack. Yeah, but, but that ball, what he'll learn is, is, you know, I want Tyon to bring it up. But Marcus is probably more adept to, to, to doing that than he on our team. Let's get the ball to Marcus and let Tyon be a finisher in that situation. But, How nice will it be to have a couple seniors like Marcus? I mean, Marcus and Mitch, good leadership. There's That's a good it. shot. Yeah, by see, Tyon. he can score the ball. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm really excited about uh, uh, Mitch and and, uh, and Marcus as seniors, and David and Oach as underclassmen. There's Oach with the three. I, I, I yeah. think that we got a chance to have really good leadership. We've always had pretty good leadership, but I, I, I think this year we could have even better than most. Here in about, uh, what is it, about a month, you're going to have the NBA draft. Any uh, any ideas where Devon and Doak might land? I really don't know. I, I don't have a great feel for it. By the way, Ty. You can just tell his athleticism Yeah, he's got, right he's, there. he can get yeah. his own shot. Once he figures it out. Uh, 
I, th I think Dodd's got a chance to get in the first. I think Doak's got an outside chance to get in the first, uh, based on what I've heard. I, I, I think that there's a, a, you know, Dot will at worst go early second. I think Doak at worst goes mid-second. But, but I think a lot just depends between now and then and, you know, on interviews and, and, and kind of what the Because now they can finally, is. at this point, they can go see teams now, right? I believe that's the rule. Uh, uh, I know they that, haven't been I, I know that they've done their testing and, and uh, you know, all those things. And both of those guys would test out ridiculously high on, on speed, agility, and, you know, quickness. I saw Doke, I saw Doke uh, uh, at Jeremy Case's uh, and Lauren's wedding. And, and uh, I'm telling you what, he looked better than he did last year. I mean, he is so fit, and uh, he seems to be in great shape. And some of the things that, that I've been hearing about Devon physically on some of his testing and stuff is far better than what it even was here. So those guys have both had good so-called off seasons, I guess, getting ready for the draft. We'll find out if Dewan can make some clutch free throws down by one with 12.9 to go. Not even close. Oh. Now Red's going to have to foul. And Mitch oh. throws it away. So you're down. I mean, you got the game won, and Mitch throws it. That's a senior to a senior. That, we just and, talked and about so, leadership. So, yeah. So we 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 we'll have to we'll have to work on that. Fortunately, we haven't talked about anything like that. <laughs> of course, why would you want to just not turn it over with? Yeah, Nine just, seconds left, and you're up one. You don't even take it over half court. Uh, uh, what, Come on, Mitch. <laughs> you walked. Oh, you were behind. You were behind. So, oh, so Mitch was trying to make the outlet to give Marcus a chance to go score. So, oh, good thought, just bad execution. We'll All see right. if David can knock these down. I think Dave, they're playing David one really to make two. He's a good free throw shooter last His body year. looks terrific. And he got fouled. So hopefully we'll, we'll know better that maybe when you're down one with six seconds left that the other team shoots it. The only chance you have if he misses it would be to get the defensive rebound. Right. As opposed to nobody block anybody off. So now they got to shoot a three. Well, Let's see what Mark's got up his sleeve. We hadn't practiced any of this stuff. Got it off. Oh, pretty good. Had a good shot, though. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty so good. So the red uh, team will be victorious here in the first 2020 virtual late night ever. Yeah, you know what? Uh, uh, that was pretty good, we, though. We could play more, but I think that's probably enough, don't you? Well, you're the boss. I mean, yeah. you enjoy this. I mean, uh, talking uh, to me, I know, is is a highlight of, of your every day. Highlight of yeah. game day is is. The post-game interview. <laughs> should we do the should we do the Martin Pringle post-game interview right now? I, I don't believe so. <laughs> well, that'll wrap up our first virtual late night here in the fog here in 2020. Coach, yeah, appreciate I, I the time. I enjoyed it, Greg, and I haven't commented on it, but that's the best Fourth of July jacket I've ever seen. Oh, I like oh, that. Oh, that's that's oh. nice right there. Yeah, I always okay. try to do something good for late night. Okay. Okay. Well, you did. Appreciate you. Rock Chalk.
This year's men's team features an experienced nucleus as well as some strong new players. Thank you for joining us on this virtual late night in the fog. We look forward to seeing you here at the fog when we can all be together again. Good night. Kansas Athletics would like to thank High V for presenting Late Night in the Fog. Thank you for joining us tonight and Rock Chalk Jayhawk. For extended coverage of this year's late night scrimmages, go to KUAthletics.com.